Shi Ching Xuan frowned. The roads cut off? No way. He held the palm torch in one hand and used the other to feel around the stone wall, looking for any signs of mechanics. He then cast a few spells for clearing illusions to no avail. The wall remained immovable. There wasn't more that he could do. Maybe I'll just punch a hole through it, he said. That would cause way too much commotion, Shirlian said. The entire Paradise Manor would be alerted. Shi Ching Xuan placed his hand flat on the stone wall and blasted a short burst of spiritual energy, but dropped his hand after a moment. Even if I punch, it'd be useless. This wall is probably over 10 feet thick. Shirlian saw with his own eyes that the masked youth had entered here. It'd be silly to think he'd sneak around just to meditate and reflect in a dead-end tunnel. There must be some sort of mechanism involved, so the two continued to examine their surroundings in greater detail. Soon, Shirlian pointed, Lord Windmaster, take a look at the ground. There seems to be something. Shi Ching Xuan dropped his palm immediately, and the two squatted around where Shirlian had pointed. The ground of this tunnel was paved with numerous square bricks, and each brick was about the size of a small door. The brick that they were standing on, right in front of the stone wall, had a drawing upon it. It wasn't a large drawing, but it was of a little person throwing dice. Shi Ching Xuan raised his head. So does this mean it's the same method as before, that we'd have to toss the right number to open the stone wall? Shirlian nodded slightly. That looks to be the case, but I didn't come in here with that masked youth, so I don't know what the right number is. We've come this far, Shi Ching Xuan said. It's not realistic to turn back just to find that out. Let's just throw a random number and see. Shirlian agreed. Lord Windmaster, why don't you give it to go? I don't know how long my borrowed luck will last. Shi Ching Xuan didn't decline. He picked up the dice and tossed them to the floor. How about that, he said. He rolled a two and a five. The two of them waited in silence, but the stone wall didn't move. Shirlian picked up the dice. I guess that didn't work. Shi Ching Xuan suddenly cried. Your Highness, look under your feet. The pictures changed. Hearing this, Shirlian immediately looked down. Sure enough, the image on the square brick beneath their feet had been a little person throwing dice. But as they watched, the colors slowly faded and filled in once more, transforming into a different scene, looking like a long, fat and thick, black, creepy crawler. What in the world is this? Shi Ching Xuan wondered. An earthworm? Or is it a leech? Shirlian guessed. That's what it looks like. There's plenty in the paddy fields, so I've seen a lot. Shi Ching Xuan wondered some more. What kind of life did you lead to see a lot of this stuff? Before his words were finished, his entire person disappeared. It wasn't just him. Shirlian himself disappeared too. It turned out, just as the words what in the world were uttered, they both felt that the ground beneath their feet was hollow. And the next moment, they started free-falling into another tunnel. It turns out, that the stone wall wasn't a door after all, and was in all seriousness a wall. The square brick beneath their feet was the real door. After tossing the dice, the doors opened suddenly and closed instantly. Shirlian and Shi Ching Xuan fell for only a moment before landing heavily on the ground. It was a good thing that the ground was soft. Otherwise, the two would have crated in deep. They didn't think that the fall was painful and were just pulling themselves up when their heads knocked into each other. They fell back to the ground. Shirlian, with one hand covering his forehead, was feeling about his surroundings with his other hand, but only made contact with the soft, wet, muddy ground. There were no stone tiles. That stone wall was long gone. When they fell earlier, the palm torch 
that Sir Ching Xuan ignited had been extinguished. Now that he had lit it up once more and brightened their surroundings, the two discovered that they were in a mud tunnel. The tunnel was round in shape, with muddy walls and didn't appear to be man-made. Shu Ching Xuan rubbed his forehead. What is this place? Did we get thrown here because we tossed the wrong number? Shu Lian hummed and said, It's very possible. That stone door is gone, meaning we have no chance of turning back. Let's think of a way to escape first. The two talked it over and decided to keep following the tunnel path. The tunnel had innumerable twists and turns, and if a full-grown adult wanted to stand up straight in it, they'd have a hard time. They could only bend at the waist to walk or crawl, moving both slowly and tiresomely. The air in this tunnel was also warm and moist, the mud clingy and annoying. Each of their steps sinking and dragging, watery and gross. Sometimes they would even step into the rotten remains of plants or animals. Shulian's face never changed, but Shu Qingxuan had goosebumps pop up all over. But the more they traversed, the more Shulian felt that something was off. Lord Windmaster, we better move faster, otherwise. Just then, a loud, bizarre roaring sound came echoing. The noise crashed in, the entire tunnel shook, and small blots of mud pitter patted down from the quaking. The two looked at each other, and without a word, they sped off in the opposite direction to the noise. Yet that loud sound and the quaking shook the tunnel violently, and its speed was much faster than theirs, cutting in closer by the second. The two of them moved with much difficulty, one step shallow and one step deep, crawling through the twisting tunnel without end in sight, not even a ray of light. And not just that, but the direction they were running toward also reverberated the same loud noise and quaking. Both front and back were blocked. The two had to stop. Along with the crashing noises, the sound of a heavy and gigantic body pushing through the mud whammed past, and two humongous earthworms wiggled in, appearing before Shirlian and Shu Qingxuan. The two worms were swollen and large, their bodies a bruising purple, and their skin lightly translucent. The body of the insects were segmented, no head, no tail, and the fronts were only a meat stump. If those weren't worms, then what were they? The door opened and threw them into such a monster's nest. Sherlin raised an arm to guard before himself, Roya at the ready. Shu Ching Xuan untucked his Windmaster fan from who knows where. Unfortunately, in this narrow tunnel, it was impossible to start any gusts, and any blows would only recoil, making it hard to make use of that spiritual device. Just then, Shirlian recalled that worms were afraid of light and heat, and he shouted, Lord Windmaster, please let me have some power and intensify the palm torch. Shu Ching Xuan followed his direction and tapped Shirlian with his left hand while the flames in his right palm burst a few feet higher. Sure enough, the two giant worms felt the heat and shrunk back, pulling away a few feet in the distance. The two, using the flames, continued on their path slowly, forcing the giant earthworms to keep a distance and prayed for an exit. However, the tunnel was narrow, and soon enough, it wasn't only the worms feeling the heat from the flames. Shirlian and Shu Ching Xuan were sweating profusely, as if they were baking in an oven, miserable and wretched. And the more terrifying thing was that Shu Ching Xuan couldn't keep burning his powers to keep the flames alive, and the fire grew smaller and smaller. They also noticed that although the giant earthworms were evading them, they weren't as jittery. After a few more steps, Shirlian felt his breathing grow difficult and said, Lord Windmaster, the palm torch won't last. 
The mud here may be moist and loose, but we're still deep underground. Soon the air will no longer pass, the fire will die, and we are going to faint. Shi Qingxuan gritted his teeth. Then we can only use the distance shortening array. Although neither of the two had a free hand to draw an array, and the current environment wasn't exactly ideal, there was no other way. Let me find somewhere flat, Xiulian said. Just then, he felt beneath his step a small plate that didn't seem to be moist and spongy, but more so like a stone tile. Xiulian's mind moved, and he immediately crouched down to check. Just as he suspected, it was another stone door. There was also another drawing of a little person tossing dice on the door. Shi Qingxuan also stepped onto the tile and was overjoyed. Quick, throw the dice and open it. Shirlian was just about to toss out the dice, but suddenly thought, but what if I roll out worse outcomes and open a more horrifying place? Shirlian passed the dice to Shi Qingxuan. Here, you do it. Without a word, Shi Qingxuan grabbed the dice and tossed. This time, it was a three and a four. Shirlian picked up the dice readily, and the two stood together over the tile. The palm torch on Shi Qingxuan's hand became smaller by another inch. The two giant worms were squirming and twisting, struggling to approach. Shirlian watched the drawing on the tile closely as it slowly dissolved into another picture. The picture was of a forest, and a number of weirdly dressed little people were dancing in circles around another. Just then, one of the worms wouldn't hold back anymore and rushed toward them with the small mouth on the head opening, dragging its heavy body. Thankfully, just as the worms were only mere feet away from them, the stone door opened. This time, the two fell into another narrow hole, but the ground was hard, cramped and dry. The fall was painful, and the two tumbled and knocked into each other. Shirlian was used to pain, so he didn't make a sound, but Shi Qingxuan yelled in pain. Shirlian's ears were hurt by the loud screaming. Worried that something might have happened, he called out, Lord Windmaster, are you okay? Shi Qingxuan's head was at the bottom and his legs up. I don't know if I'm okay. I've never fallen like this before. Your Highness, there's way too much thrill working with you. Hearing this, Shirlin couldn't help but let out a small laugh and realized that the two of them fell into a hole in a tree. He crawled out of the hole with great difficulty and extended a helping hand to Shi Qingxuan. Thanks for all your hard work. You're welcome, Shi Qingxuan replied. He pulled on Shirlin's hand and climbed out of the hole muddy and disheveled, his silk dress robe ripped and rumpled. When he got out, he put a hand over his brows to block out the sharp brightness of the sun. Where's this? he asked. As you see, this is a forest deep in the mountains, Shirlin replied. He looked around him and said, I think that these stone doors are a spiritual device that have the same function as the distance shortening array. Different numbers will take us to different places. I wonder if we tossed any correct numbers. Shi Qingxuan crossed his two now bare arms and pondered seriously. Using the distance shortening array just once requires an immense amount of spiritual power. To create these stone doors to prevent others from snooping around, that crimson rain sword flower is indeed powerful and no stranger to mind games. Although his expression was solemn, with bare arms and such an unkempt disposition, he didn't look serious at all. Rather, he looked hilarious. Shirlian held back his laugh with great difficulty. He thought about the way Hua Cheng would lift his lips and shook his head. Rather than mind games, it's more that he's mischievous. Shirlian thought. The two had only just gotten out of the hole in the tree, and not even a few steps after, a number of red-skinned, naked people 
suddenly poured out from the nearby bushes and surrounded them. They started jumping, howling as they did so. The two were shocked, and Shu Qingxuan cried, What is this? What is this? Xue Lin raised his hand. Don't panic. Let's take a look first. He steadied himself to look at those people. They weren't truly naked, but were wearing animal skins and leaves, looking like they were ready to drink blood. They had long branch spears and sharp stoned axes in hand. And when they smiled at the two, their teeth were jaggedly sharp, like saws. The two ran without saying a word. Shu Qingxuan shouted as he ran. My brother used to always tell me that deep in the southern mountains are many cannibals that live off of human flesh. He told me not to ever come to such a place on my own. Is that what these people are? Xu Lin was practiced in the art of escape, so his entire demeanor and manner were much more serene than Shu Qingxuan. He replied calmly, Hmm, that's very possible. Either way, let's find the door first. Let's see if there are any more stone doors nearby. Those people ran after them, screaming and howling tirelessly. Originally, Xu Lin and Shu Qingxuan could only escape and not fight back because there were heavenly laws that dictated that should gods ever descend to the mortal realm, they shall not use their powers to oppress. This law was to prevent heavenly officials from bullying mortals and creating disasters born of abuse of power. But the cannibals unceasingly threw sharp rocks and branches at them. And one such branch scraped Shu Qingxuan's cheek. This was absolutely unacceptable. Shu Qingxuan felt his face and there was the lightest of a bloody scratch and he saw red. He roared and came to a sudden stop. Turning around, he shouted, You ignorant cannibals! Not only did you not cower in fear before me, the Lord Windmaster, you dare ruin my face! Unbelievable! After shouting, he pulled out his Windmaster fan, flashing it open with a powerful whoosh and swung with force. The cannibals were blown off the ground and smashed into nearby trees, howling as they hung off the branches. The two could finally stop running and took in deep breaths, trying to calm their heartbeat. That thought came to Shirlian again. It's hard being a god. In the three realms, no one had it harder. Shu Qingxuan huffed and turned to Shirlian. Your Highness, you saw it, right? They were asking for it. I wasn't using my powers to oppress. Yes, I saw, Shirlian said. Shu Qingxuan felt his face again and mumbled under his breath. Even my brother wouldn't dare. He turned around again. Let's go find that stone door. Shirlian nodded silently and watched Shu Qingxuan fix his clothes and hair, looking carefree once more. Unfortunately, he was dressed in a bedraggled purple silk dress, so his carefree air had a queer, peculiar flavour. It was an unforgettable sight. Shirlian couldn't help but lament. Thinking back to when they first met at the Banyue Pass, the Lord Windmaster was such a scintillating figure, so much so that Shirlian had thought him a powerful being with immeasurable depth, if not a supreme demonic cultivator than a supreme saint. Now that they were close, he understood that everything was but an illusion. The two walked around in circles in the forest and finally found a set of stone doors next to a different tree hole. This time, Shu Qingxuan shook his head and refused to toss the dice. I don't know what's going on, but even though my luck isn't the best every time, it's also not the worst every time. Lady Fortune doesn't seem to be with me today. I tossed twice, and the first time was that earthworm tunnel, the second time a cannibal forest. Who knows what's next? Shirlin cleared his throat softly and guiltily replied, Maybe it's because I'm with you, so I brought your luck down with me. What are you saying? Shu Qingxuan exclaimed. It's impossible for anyone to bring down my luck. 
I, the Lord Windmaster. But why don't you give it a go? Maybe there's still some of the luck that you borrowed from your son Lung. Shirlin didn't know why, but he felt a bit embarrassed when he heard your son Lung. He wanted to explain, but at the same time, what was there to explain? If he must explain, then it'd be a little weird. So in the end, he didn't say anything. He felt the dice in his hands and tossed them out lightly. It was two sixes. Shirlin held his breath as he watched the drawings on the stone door transform and mentally prepared himself to face whatever came next. But this time, the picture didn't change and the stone door creaked open. Behind the door was another long stairway that descended into darkness, blowing cold air. The two looked at each other, both thinking, did we circle back to the beginning after going through all that? Even if it was back at the beginning, it was still better than bizarre dangers, and they'd had enough. Thus, the two decided to descend. The moment they entered through, the door closed behind them, and when they reached out to push, the door had become a stone wall. Looks like the only way is down, Shirlian said. Ugh, all right, Shi Qingxuan sighed. Let me take a breather, and we'll continue to play that hateful, Crimson Rain sought flowers game. The two once again descended down the long and rectangular stony path. After 200 steps or so, Shirlian realized something. Good news, Lord Windmaster. This isn't the same path we took the first time, even though they're similar. Shi Qingxuan had noticed it too. You're right. The first time we reached the stone wall after 200 steps, but not this time. Shirlian said softly, looks like this time we're on the right path. Just as he finished his words, the two came to a stop. Not far before them, in the darkness, wafted the stench of blood. Accompanying the smell was the heavy breathing of a man. The two didn't move a muscle and said no words. No light, no flames. Yet the other party had already sensed their presence. Because right after they stopped, a cold voice rang out. I have nothing to say, a man said in a deep voice. Hearing that voice, Shi Qingxuan immediately ignited a palm torch. <laughs>